Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be talking about pack-in games. And I, I kind of got this idea because I was speaking with uh, or chatting with uh, a, a good buddy, Jim's Retro Zone, uh, who also does YouTube videos. And uh, he was saying, or we were kind of talking about, it was on his Space Invaders video, and he made it a comment that it would have been great or probably better if Atari... Uh, the, the original Atari 2600, or VCS it was originally called, if it would have come with uh, Space Invaders rather than the game it came with. And the game it came with was Combat. And if you know anything about Atari, uh, the old Atari systems, everybody has Combat. Everybody their mother has Combat. And not just one Combat, you probably have like five Combats or more. Um, because, I don't know, whenever you buy a collection of video games, you end up with Combats. Uh, now, uh, well, kind of in the, in the conversation there, um, like I was saying, you know, it's a, probably a lot of people bought the Atari just so they can play Space Invaders. So maybe it was a good idea that Atari, um, didn't pack it in with the system because then people would have to buy the Space Invaders separately. I don't know if there was a difference in timing on when the Space Invaders game was made versus the Atari being released. Um... But what I understood, and from things that I've read, was I think the original idea with the Atari was to have combat built into the system. Essentially, that if you didn't have a cartridge in there, you could just turn it on and you could play combat. Um, but I think plans changed, and uh, due to money or constraints or something, they had to make combat a physical cart and just sell it with the system. So that way, when you bought the, the system, you'd have a game to play with. Now... The, the thing about combat is it's a two-player game. So if you were an only child or, or uh, you know, you didn't have anybody else to play with, you'd have this game that you pretty much can do nothing on its own. I mean, you can drive around with the tank and shoot the other opponent who's not going to move or whatever. But other than that, I mean, it's not... It's, it's designed for two players. So uh, I don't know if the thought process was nobody's going to play video games by themselves back in the late 70s, early not early 80s. If they, you know, the marketer people, if they thought who's going to play video games by themselves, it's going to be something people are going to play together. So it won't matter. I don't know. That's my thought. But uh, I could be wrong. I don't know why Combat was chosen. It's an odd title, but I mean, it's not a bad game or, or anything like that. It's just it, it's so ridiculously common people almost have to, to pay you money to take it. Um, that's why they usually end up throwing it in with another batch of games when you buy it. Um, but then the other systems for Atari, when they came out, they, they started to learn, uh, you know, to, to put better games in there. Like for the uh, the 5200, um, they packaged that with Pac-Man. So they knew at that time that they, they had to put in a, a really good game that's going to get people's attention. And what, what better game than Pac-Man? I mean, that game is just like, it's Pac-Man. Everybody knows Pac-Man. Everybody wanted Pac-Man back then. Um, and then the Atari 7800, which came out a little bit after, uh, even though it was, I think it was supposed to come before, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of problems with it. Uh, it came with this, Pole Position 2. And I remember when my friend, um, his mother actually won an Atari 7800, and um, we got it, we opened it up, and we're like, Pole Position 2? Uh, that'll be interesting. So we put it in there, and it... It's really just pole position. It's, they, they just kind of made a little adjustment here and there. It's not, like, totally different. I, I actually think I showed this in a video before. I know I did a pole position video. I don't know if I showed part two or not. Um, but, it, I mean, it's still, it's a better packing game than combat, for sure. And it's a one-player game, so you don't have to worry about it if you're alone or whatever. <laughs> but the one that kind of really showed off uh, was ColecoVision. And they started off with Donkey Kong. Now, this is at a time when, you know, your Atari was coming with combat and the Intellivision, which was the rival to Atari and Coleco at the time, at least, well, mainly Atari, Poker and Blackjack. And I think I talked about this in one of my other videos before, how this was the pack-in game. This was the game that came with every Intellivision. It's cards. It's like Blackjack and Poker. It's for adults. It's not for kids. I don't know if the reasoning behind that was they thought, you know, adults were going to be mainly playing these things, or maybe they thought they needed to give the adults something to play with while the kids had, you know, 
whatever. I always felt it should have been something like Astro Smash, which is like one of the better titles on the, the system, or at the time it was. Anyways, a really popular title on the system. Um, you know, it, I, I understood they couldn't do something like, you know, what ColecoVision did, where they did Donkey Kong. Now, they licensed with Nintendo to be able to uh, have the game. Um, and, and that was their focus, because Donkey Kong was huge. Donkey Kong and Pac-Man were the two big games. And to be able to have it with Donkey Kong, and not only Donkey Kong, but a damn good version of Donkey Kong, comparing it to the Atari and the Intellivision. Now, if you've been watching any of my videos, or many of my videos, you'll know I've done a lot of videos on Donkey Kong. And, you know, the Intellivision Donkey Kong is not even anywhere near the good quality that this came in. Uh, this was almost arcade quality, and that was rare back then. I mean, that was really rare to actually be able to take a game out of your, you know, at home, put it in your console, and have it almost as good as the arcade. Very rare. I mean, you know, some of them were, like, Space Invaders on the Atari was actually, some argue, a little bit better. Um, but, you know, this could have driven the system. This is probably what people were like, damn, I'm going to get an, a ColecoVision because I can get Donkey Kong with it for free and then add to the collection as I move on. Whereas with the Intellivision, you're going to get that. So you're going to have to buy a game. I mean, who's going to want to just... I mean, I, I played with this. I, I put it in and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like six, seven years old. I didn't even know how to play poker or blackjack at the time. I was just kind of, you know, randomly pressing cards and stuff. Kind of funny, I don't know. But uh, at least this one, it's a one or two player. So out of the box, you got a game that you could play alone or you can play with an opponent. So they kind of did one up this uh, combat cartridge. Um, but then moving on, I mean, moving up in time here, um, I'm really talking about the stuff that got released in North America. I, I don't really know a lot of the European stuff. Uh, I know there was consoles, you know, Sega stuff that was coming out early. Um, but I'm just focusing really on North America and what I grew up with and what I knew was was going on. And then Nintendo obviously came after our big crash, our video game crash, whatever you want to call it. Nintendo came out and they packaged in Super Mario Brothers. Now, this is Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt, um, which uh, now you're getting into like three variants of the way they sold the system. So they had the original system, the control deck, came with just Super Mario Brothers. That's what it came with. Then they came out with this action set, and they were like, okay, we're going to give you a gun, and we're going to give you a duck hunt. So they, they threw it together onto one cartridge. Even though both games exist on their own cartridges, they actually created the, both games on one cartridge. And then they created another set, uh, the track and field one, where you got... Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and Track and Field, you can actually see the, the three pictures. I've seen the cartridge a few times. And you got the, the Track and Field mat, which was kind of like a, a, I don't know what to call it. It looked like a twister mat. You know, those things you put on the floor with dots on it, and you can, like, they all had connectors. I don't know. I never had one. I, I never was into that kind of stuff. But uh, that was, like, the third way. I think my friend had that one. Because um, I remember he had that mat. I don't think he ever used it. And, uh, but that really, I mean, just knowing that when I bought, got my first Nintendo, I was going to get Super Mario Brothers with it was totally cool. Um, and, you know, at that time you could just buy the system because, you know, you're lucky if you get the system alone, let alone to ask for like, say, $70, $60 game to come with it. Uh, you've got something that's going to tide you over until you can actually start to accumulate more games. I mean, things, you know, when you're a kid and you're back in the 80s, Parents were not used to just dropping hundreds of dollars on things like this, right? It's, it just was unheard of. So it, it was good that it, they would actually pack in something like this. And, of course, then the little Game Boy came out. And what did they do? They threw in Tetris. This was the game that I wanted to get my hands on so badly. I wanted it on my Nintendo. I wanted it on the Game Boy. I didn't even have a Game Boy at the time. I think this this alone was why I really wanted a Game Boy. It was this and the Super Mario Land. Now, it always struck me as odd that they chose Tetris over Super Mario Land. Um, I'm not sure what the reasoning was. I don't. I've never looked into it. I don't know if there was like a timing delay, or if they just realized that more people would be interested in Tetris than the Super Mario Brothers game. Um, 
but it probably, you know, probably worked out in the end. It was probably a brilliant strategy. And uh, a lot of people even, you know, people who don't really typically play games would get into Tetris. So kind of a smart idea. And, uh, you know, around this time, though, this is when they really started to come out with, you know, the Super Nintendo, the Genesis came out. I believe the, uh, well, the Sega Master System, the one I have, actually has a built-in game. It has Hang On, and it has the, um, what is it, Safari Hunt, I think it's called. It's like, kind of like a duck hunt game. You use the gun. Um, and they're built into the system, so th that would have been sold probably without a cartridge. Uh, but you got the two built-in games, so even without a cartridge, you can turn it on just like they were going to do with the Atari, and you got these games running. Um, kind of a clever idea, you know, if someone acquires this and later on and they don't have games for it, they have games because they're built in. Kind of a smart idea. Um, but I noticed at that time, like, they started to make things like the Genesis, and then they would, you know, I think the original one when it came out was, was Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, that's their Super Mario Brothers of, you know, Sega, was to have Sonic the Hedgehog. But uh, around this time, then they started making all these, you know, like, limited edition sets or special sets that came out with special games. Um, you know, for the Super Nintendo, I don't know, I got the Super Nintendo Mini, so it was a re-release, uh, you know, the smaller Super Nintendo, and it came packed with this. Um, that's... Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Not a bad game, but never one of my favorites. Um, I remember after I bought it, I didn't buy any games with it. I just bought this, and this was the game it came with. And so I was playing it, and I wasn't used to it. Uh, I don't think I got very far in it. I never played Super Mario World. I think maybe the original SNES came with Super Mario World itself. That's probably what it is. If, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I am I don't pretend to know everything. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of going off what I bought, and this is what came with it. Uh, I actually would have preferred Super Mario World, though. I wasn't too thrilled about this one. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an okay game. I was just, whatever. But then I noticed, you know, as time was going on, different bundle sets were coming out, all coming with different games. And then we kind of lost this whole, you know, this you buy this system, you get this game with it. It just seemed like they were just using them as promo pieces, like my N64 uh, came with Pokemon Stadium, um, you know, it was like a special set that they sold with this game. Things like that started happening, and then all the way up to like say PlayStation. I don't even think PlayStation came with a game. I think you, you just bought the PlayStation, and then you had to buy the games whatever you wanted, which you know kind of makes sense, kind of is a bummer. And all the way up to Wii. Now the Wii, I mean, that was why I wanted the Wii was really the games it came with. Uh, I wasn't too crazy about a lot of other games that were out for the Wii. I'm still not. I mean, I go into the store and I look, you know, they have all the used Wii games. And I go through every single title. I'm like, I don't I can't really find anything I want. The, the games I have for it, which are a very small amount, are like, you know, Super Mario Brothers and, uh, you know, like some of the classic stuff. Like, I don't have many Wii games. I wanted it for the game that it came with. So, and I thought that was the, you know, that's what sold the system. People probably just bought the system just for that Wii Sports. And that was it. And they probably never bought anything else. And, you know, maybe use the virtual store and download, which they've recently just got rid of, which is sad. But um, And I heard it's not coming with the Switch. Um, uh, the, the Switch myself, I, I don't know much about the Switch. I don't have a Nintendo Switch. Um, I've read a few things about it. I've seen people playing. I believe it comes with... Uh, oh, crap. I forgot. I, I don't even know anymore. But... Um, I don't think that that was the, the thing about the Switch. I think it was all the, the gimmick of, you know, being able to take it on the go. And it had nothing to do with the pack-in game. And we kind of just lost that. Now, the thing about pack-in games is they're kind of good and they're kind of bad. Because you end up with a thousand combats on the store shelves. You end up with a thousand Super Mario Brothers. And people don't care about the game because they have tons of them. And, uh, you know, there's no value in these games. They, they sit around. Uh, some people foolishly try to sell them for more than what they're worth. Um, and so at, at some point, it's, it's not good because it creates this kind of clutter that, uh, you know, everybody and their mother will have a combat. Everybody will have uh, Donkey Kong on the ColecoVision if they have a ColecoVision, if they play the ColecoVision. It's just because that's what it came with. That's 
there's for every console made there was a game made <laughs> so not that that's a good thing or a bad thing i don't know it it's just interesting and it's just something to talk about um i probably missed a bunch of systems because i i'm talking about the ones that i was more familiar with i know there was like the odyssey that came out there was vectrex um turbo graphics 16 there was a ton of systems that came out i'm not knowledgeable in all of them so i'm pretty sure there's a lot of them that came with really great pack-in games and of course i didn't even touch the computer systems like the commodore 64 or anything like that um which i i remember when i got my commodore 64 it didn't come with a game well it kind of didn't come with a game i remember when we bought it the the guy the salesman gave us a copy of uh saxon which was cool um but the actual when you buy it out of the box all it came with was an information disc. You'd put it in there and it would just have examples of stuff. No, no, no games or anything like that. Anyways, yeah, I just thought it would be neat to talk about. Kind of a fun subject. Um, let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, what was your favorite uh, system that had a packing game? And uh, what did you think of, you know, the, the choices they made? And did you think they should have done something different? You think, um, like, w was it a good choice that they did Super Mario Brothers? Was it a good choice that they did Tetris for the Game Boy? You know, I'd like to, you know, open up the conversation and talk about it. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Leave comments down below. I hope you subscribe and I'll talk to you later.